Hi and welcome to another Mr. James Accountant tutorial. Today we'll be looking at uh, module 2 of 2013 paper 2 unit 2. And uh, let's get right into it. We have before us the data for part E and uh, let's read what is required first. Determine the overhead rate for each of the three activities indicated in the table. Assign the manufacturing overhead cost for April to the two products. Calculate the total assigned cost. Calculate the overhead cost per product. Okay, let's take a look at the data. We are given two tables. One is analysis of the overhead cost. And another is the analysis of the cost driver volume. So the number of the cost drivers. All right, let's go through it a little. Bracketing Incorporated manufactures two product geometrical dividers and T-squares. During April, 1,500 dividers and 3,000 T-squares were produced. Overhead company incurred by the company amount to 80,000. Analysis of overhead costs revealed the following activities. So we have three activities, material handling, setups for machine and quality inspection. The cost drivers are requisitions, the most setups and inspections. And we are given the total cost for each of these activities. Then we have the analysis of the cost driver. The requisitions that is this column here is broken down further. All right, 400 geometrical divisors, 600 for T-squares. So we have the two products here and the cost driver here is we have the two tolls here. All right, so let's get into part one of the, the activity rates. Material handling is going to be 35,000 divided by 1,000, so that's $35 per handling. Well, let me just show you where we get that. The 35,000 here and the 1,000 here in total. Okay. Will give us the thirty-five dollars per handling. The machine set up thirty thousand divided by four fifteen give us sixty-six point six seven per setup. And the quality inspections fifteen thousand divided by six hundred equal twenty-five dollars per setup. But again, we can go back to the data and we'll see thirty thousand and the fifteen thousand, four fifteen and the six hundred here. So that gives us the activity rates. We go along to part B. We'll find out how much for geometrical dividers. All we do is we take the activity and multiply it by the rate. Okay, so the 400 here for material handling is coming from the 400 here, right? And then we use the 150 for setups and the other one for inspection. And we do the same for T squares. All right, so we have material and then 400 by 35. The 35 is from here. For machine setup, it will be 66.67, and for quality inspection, 25. So that's where we got these figures from here. And we saw the 400, 150, and 200 came from the given data. So we got 14,000 for each one of these four geometrical dividers. Then we go to T squares and we do the same thing material handling, machine setups, quality setups, inspection. And we multiply the amount. Again, this amount is given in the data. 
But here this time is t squared, so we take this color. Our acquisition set up some inspection. Okay, 600, 300, 400, and we multiply it by the rates that we want. The activity rates, and we get the amount of course, for each one of those activities for T squares. Moving on, the total assigned costs, let's add up the three activities for each item, and we get the total cost assigned for that. For that 29,000 for Geometrical dividers and 51,000 for T squares. Uh, let's take a quick look back and we will see where it's coming from. T squares, you get it here 21, 20, 10, and geometrical dividers 14, 10, 5. Okay. Was not so sure what this was asking for here. Provide cost per product. I think it, it's asking for the unit cost. So to get that, we take the total cost that we calculated and we divide it by 1500. We had 1500 geometrical dividers and 3000 T squares, if you recall. I'll just look back quickly and show you that. It's up here, 1,500 dividers and 3,000 T squares. Okay. Um, so we, when we divide the total cost that we got here for each product, we get the cost per product. Uh, this is the unit cost per product. I think the word unit was probably missing from the... Uh, item. Okay, we move on to part B, state four differences between Roboto costing and process costing. And then part C, identify four types of organization and service extra costing can be used. Outline two difficulties associated with service sector costing. Okay, so this is more or less a reading exercise that you can get, pick up in the your textbooks, the answer for it. Nevertheless, we take a look at it. So, what are costing? Four differences. I give you a number of them here. Uh, job costing has many different jobs that work on each week period. And in process costing is the same thing, but different processes. Okay. You're making the same product. Here, or you have different processes. Each job has different production requirement. This has the same production requirement. Like if you're making soft drink and it goes through the same requirements every time you decide to produce. Right? Costs are accumulated by job, by individual job. Here is a group of jobs. Job cost sheet is the key document controlling the accumulated cost by individual job. Here we have the process production report and the working process account. The cost is accumulated there. Unit costs are computed by job on the job cost sheet. We usually have a, a stock card for each job. Right, you can have job here using process costing, right? Or a single product is produced either on continuous basis or for a long period of time, and all are identical, not identical. Um, output of each process is different. Costs are accumulated by department, by order. When people give you an order, when you begin to produce and you accumulate the cost for our order. The production report is the only key document showing accumulation of cost. Benefit here is incurred by process. Unit costs are computed by department 
on a production report, production and sales report. You could make your unit course out there. Okay, so um, that's the differences between job order costing and process costing. Move to the next slide. Different organization for organizations with for which service sector costings can be used. They can be used in tourism, hospitals, hotels, educational institutions, schools, universities, and things like that. Transportation, bus services, and uh, catering, restaurants, security services, electricity. In fact, any um, organization which provides a service rather than make a product, you could use service sector posting. All right, and usually what they use the, in there is either job posting, depending on the nature of the service they provide, or ABC posting can be used. Two difficulties associated with service sector costings. Time taken to complete the activity is not easy to determine in advance. Right? Typically, we say you're doing catering, different meals will take a different time to cook. Right? Um, if you look at after patients in a hospital, each patient you might have to spend a different amount of time with. Next, we have the volume of activity is difficult to estimate. You can't really tell how much clients you're going to get. Choice of course unit is difficult to pinpoint, right? What constitute a unit of the service is very difficult to, um, to think. A hairdresser, you could easily tell what a unit would be one haircut, right? Uh, you can have part of a haircut, but um, other things are very difficult to tell what when you have service one unit. Measurement of output is difficult to estimate, right? Remember, cost and management accounting is about forecasting future things so you can determine your price before you do the service, right? or before you make the product. And um, one of the difficulties here is in service sector costing is the output. How do you measure the output? Okay. That then will bring us to the end of the question, end of the module. Um, if you had, a, if you found this helpful, hopefully you give it a thumbs up. If you don't, you can give it a thumbs down. And um, I'll see you again in the next video.